Um, so we have a few items to go through today, um, but the tech up update itself is um, relatively incremental. Um, I think uh, Raphael is going to do a demo today. Raphael, uh, you are ready for the demo in, in a little while? Yep. Okay. All right. So I think you should be seeing my screen now, uh, Community Update 186, the tech update. Yeah. Uh, the main net today, uh, same version is running, but uh, on the test net, we have a uh, version of the uh, code base with uh, Will's bug fix for the transaction API. Um, right now, they, we didn't fully tag this release yet, but uh, we wanted to put it out there on the test net so that the exchanges and others can test. Um, and then once we get confirmation that everything is working for them, we'll uh, go ahead, tag and release this and move it on to the main net. Uh, so that's the only difference between the test net version and the uh, main net version at the moment, that there is a bug fix for the transaction API. Uh, block merge test net is available for the community. We strongly uh, urge, request, uh, beg you to use it, give us any feedback, um, and more importantly, get your code base ready for, uh, for the hard fork when it's going to be coming. The uh, leaderful... Uh, block merge is mostly complete. There is the uh, uh, merging of the rev balances work that's uh, going on right now. Tom Slav is working on it. And once he's done with that, we will be putting it all, merging it all in, into the code base and test. Uh, so hopefully sometime next week, we will be having that on the test net is, is uh, what we're hoping for the leader full version of the block merge. Um, separately, there is the leaderless version of the block merge uh, or synchronic constraint 0.67 that would generate a DAG. That work is going on. Uh, there are some new pieces uh, or new conditions and new interactions that we need to deal with there uh, between the Casper state and the and the block processing. Uh, so NutZipper is working through all of that, and um, we. Uh, we will have uh, more of an update on that in the next uh, debrief. So that's also coming along, the leaderless uh, block merge. The uh, other part is the performance improvement. I said last week that we're, Dennis and Tamsla were working on putting a specification together. That uh, work of uh, writing down the specification and you know, clarif clarifying any questions and all of that is complete. Uh, Dennis is moving towards the initial implementation of the uh, performance improvement in the in the Scala uh, code base, and uh, uh, depending on how long that will take him, hopefully by the end of next week we'll have uh, initial results on that also. Uh, like I said in the past, uh, we think the eventually the Rust implementation may be the um, right piece at least for parts of this, uh, but the idea is to first do it in Scala and then do uh, some pieces in Rust where it makes sense and then do the hooks from Scholar to Rust as needed. Uh, so that's the plan with that. Influx DB uh, work and the Telegraph Toolkit um, to uh, quickly get at the information without having the multitude of tools that we are currently using. Uh, that one is proceeding. Uh, Gurinder has done a little demo for the uh, development team the other day. And uh, I think soon the development team will receive the dashboards. And then maybe at that time, we'll do a community uh, uh, review of that. And also we'll move it onto the main net uh, so that the community has access to those uh, dashboards over the next several weeks. So that's the main thrust of the work. Uh, there has not been any uh, further work on the POS because uh, Quantifier has uh, been on vacation. Uh, but uh, he is, uh, when he comes back, he's, he's going to get into that and, and finish up that. Uh, I think he has one test failing on the state transition piece where when there are updates to the system contracts, the idea is that you can do a soft fork to be able to update system contracts. And that will ease, uh, ease a lot of the, uh, we should be able to move a lot of the updates without a hard fork to the soft, soft fork where possible. Um, so that's the work he's doing and uh, he'll be finishing that piece um, in the next few weeks. So that's the work that's going on there. I think that's uh, overall the uh, status of the tech update. 
does anyone have any questions, comments on any of this? So I just want to amplify that uh, um, Tomasov is actually working on the the per um, deploy merging. So, and in particular, um, we're already beginning to see um, some of the use of being able to detect when channels have a given type. So Tomasov is, is, has um, created a special class of channels that only carry um, the numeric values that are associated with the, um, the rev transfers, which can then be used to uh, speed up the, the merges that are related to, uh, to transfers. Um, and that's uh, um, ultimately we want to be able to detect all uses of those channels at the type level. Uh, so I'm uh, I'm particularly enthusiastic about the work that, that Tomislav is doing, not only because it will result in a much better performance with respect to uh, um, rev transfers uh, and merging, but uh, because it uh, foreshadows what we plan to do in Venus with respect to the type system. Uh, yeah, Rafael, please go ahead. Let me stop sharing. Okay, so my turn. So... I think I did not do a DEPI presentation for a while, so I'll just summarize uh, the project. Let's share the screen first. Okay. Um, so let me get on the DEPI website. Uh, this moves to the left. Okay, so I'm Raphael. I'm um, uh, leading the DEPI project. So DEPI is a... Um, uh, an alternative name system and web browser that does not use the centralized services of the DNS and um, of the regular web, but instead it uses uh, the blockchain and uh, the DAPI network. So the goal is to build this DAPI network and to, pro um, to propose uh, superior levels of trust and integrity to users um, uh, in, com in comparison to um, regular DNS and the traditional web with uh, the, the domain names uh, everyone knows. So um, in order for the DAP name system to work, I started uh, to build um, a contract um, for fungible tokens or non-fungible tokens on our chain. And this is uh, the our chain token. You can get the code on GitHub. And um, tonight or... Uh, <laughs> Today, I, I, I'd like to just demonstrate a few features um, related to our chain token. And uh, so what I'll show is not directly linked to DAPI. Uh, I will just create a uh, fungible tokens contract using the CLI and show you how it, um, it appears and how you can also uh, play with uh, the tokens in DAPI. So for developers, um, Developers may be uh, comfortable with uh, the CLI. Uh, it's a Node.js CLI to create a contract, send tokens, update the price of a token, uh, purchase token from someone else, etc. And 50% uh, of those operations, you can also do them in DAPI. So it's uh, a much more user-friendly interface. So let's start with the CLI. So um, I, I deployed um, just a master contract to start with, and uh, there's no need for me to explain what it is. Um, it does not matter that much. Um, so one key component of uh, Archin token is a box. It's kind of an, ad, uh, an address. So anyone can um, just create a box if the box ID is available, of course. So I'll create uh, a box with my uh, private key. The box ID will be my box. Let's do this, node CLI deploy box. So I'm, work, I'm working with my local uh, R node, so it should be uh, quite quick. Okay, box already exists, so <laughs> first issue. So yeah, I'll create uh, my cool box. And of course, this is um, free. You just pay for the flow price. Uh, it's uh, entirely free. So I have the comments here. 
Okay, nice. I have created my box so I can do node CLI view box. And it's just an empty box right now. And so the second step can be uh, um, is the creation of a contract. So a box can own many contracts. They could be fungible or non-fungible, but I'll just create a fungible uh, contract that will be called fruit. I hope it's not taken. Let's try this. Okay, great. Let's check our node. Okay, contract registered. Okay, so the contract is created. And now if I do view box again, I'll see that I have a super key. And a super key is the capability to perform uh, admin operations on a contract. So um, I'll use this capability to uh, create tokens now. Regular users, of course, can't create tokens uh, on a contract uh, for which they don't have the super key. So um, um, token creation is very easy because you can use JSON file. I'll show you the file. So I'll create 1,000 bananas to uh, 200,000 oranges and 200 kiwis. And um, of course, they will be sent uh, to the box I just created. So this is the command create person. And this one is asynchronous. So um, uh, we'll have to, to check. Um, OK, so here you can see the logs. Apparently, uh, all three purses uh, were created, so that's fine. So let's do again node CLI view. View is a command to view a contract instead of a box. Nice. OK, so we have uh, the three purses. They can't be mixed because they. Uh, in one purse, you can have only one kind, one type of tokens. So we have everything. And now let's switch to DAPI. So in DAPI, you can have many accounts. But uh, since um, six months ago, uh, there is also um, uh, integration of our chain token inside DAPI. So this is my uh, private key I used. So this is the account. I will just add the box I have created with the CLI. And this way, I can see um, through the P what's in this box. Um, so I guess something is wrong because we only have two. Let's reload. OK, that's strange. So uh, of course, something <laughs> is going wrong. Um, so I guess I, I will uh, try to understand why we can't see all the three purses. Error. Apparently, everything is fine. So it does not matter. I'll just go through uh, the demo. Um, so let's say I, I have a friend and I want to send him some tokens I own. So um, I'll just create uh, like my friend's box and we'll pretend that it's not me. So let's create this box, Bob. And uh, using DAPI, we will send some, some orange tokens um, to Bob. OK, this is strange. Sometimes we have two, sometimes only one. OK, so the box is created. So now, um, so here you have three um, operations, but only uh, this one, uh, the withdraw operation, we will look at uh, today. So the box we want to withdraw to is Bob. So uh, keep in mind that we are in a R-chain token um, layer. So we don't use public keys and rev addresses. It's another layer 
above um, the public keys and the private keys. So uh, I want to withdraw to Bob. Uh, I want to send him like 50 tokens. And of course, I have to input my password to decrypt, to encrypt uh, the private key on Depi browser. If you don't have the, if um, the JavaScript context does not have the private key, it can't sign a transaction uh, to be sent to our chain network. So let's hit withdraw. Okay, fine. So here we can see a new transaction in the list. Let's check the logs. Okay, so apparently it went well. Okay, this has updated. Um, checking the first box uh, first. Okay, so the 50 tokens are gone. And now um, let's reference uh, Bob's box here and check it. And we have the, the 50 uh, new tokens um, that arrived uh, in Bob's box. So I guess uh, that's it. That was um, the demo I wanted to show. Um, you can do operations on uh, the CLI and you can as well use DAPI to um, send tokens, sell tokens. Right now you can't uh, create them uh, in DAPI. You have to use like J the JSON file, but um, maybe some, um, Maybe it's uh, a f an, incoming, an incoming feature um, to be able to quickly, uh, with a CSV file, for example, quickly create um, hundreds of, of tokens um, on Arch and token. So that's, that's it. Awesome. That's a great demo, Raphael. It, it, it looks um, close enough in readiness to begin to explore something that I've I've been thinking about a lot that I, I believe has applications to DeFi, but is not DeFi. I mean, it, it could help with DeFi considerably, but, but um, we don't have to think about it in those terms because there's a lot of legal baggage that comes with DeFi. Um, but anyway, the, the, the idea is if, if we think about um, tokens as uh, like elements or molecules, then we can imagine that there are rules for combining them and that only uh, certain combinations would be usable in certain circumstances. So for example, let's imagine that we have a sodium token and a chlorine token. Um, and then we can, we can uh, imagine that there's a reversible relation uh, or, or reaction in which sodium and chlorine tokens react. So if you put sodium and chlorine together in the same wallet, they react under certain conditions uh, and form NaCl or salt. Um, and now with salt, you can use salt in other situations. Um, perhaps a, a, a more um, uh, interesting example, which is, which is uh, 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 clearer to use, uh, imagine that we have some hydrogen tokens and some oxygen tokens and we put them together in a wallet, um, then the, the rule would, would allow for the formation of water. So you'd get two hydrogen tokens and one oxygen uh, token forming a water token. And then water can be um, combined with other things to, to uh, dissolve those things. So for example, we might combine the water with the salt and occasionally get the uh, the sodium and the chlorine to um, to separate, uh, for example, or there might be other situations in which you use water to d dissolve certain things. But the, the the main idea is to use the um, <clears throat> the, uh, the 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 guidance of chemistry um, uh, uh, to to allow us to create a framework in which we can have token wrappers, token combinations, and other kinds of things. And this can this can be uh, uh, quite useful, for example, in supply chain management. For example, um, you can't release a car without both a chassis and tires and an engine. So if you, if you, if you had a complete 
set of tires. So four tire tokens represents the fact that in your inventory, you actually have four tires. And, um, and you have a, a, a chassis token, which means in your inventory, you actually have a complete chassis. And you have an, an engine token, meaning that in your inventory, you actually have a complete engine. Then you can put them all in the same, uh, the same soup, so to speak, and, and that equals a car. Uh, so, so that would mean that in your inventory, you actually have a car token that you could trade for something else, such as, as cash, or, um, or some other kind of good or service that would be uh, equal in value to the car. Um, so so uh, this generic capability of doing chemical equations um, uh, over token, uh, token categories uh, provides a wide range of interesting applications. Um, but I think that the, the main idea is to have an exploratory toolkit uh, that might um, you know, that, 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 that might be fun for people to play around with. Does that make sense? Yeah, I think so. And um, yes, the, the, the trouble is to, 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 to get an idea of how those synergies and those, um, you know, relations, uh, ch chemical uh, relations would be um, coded and expressed in rolling. Yes, and, uh, yes. This yeah, is, so of you course, could, the hard part. <laughs> you, you, you could imagine a compiler that goes from chemical equations, which you know you could you could imagine a chemist a chemistry um, notation, right, which lines up with with today's chemistry notation, and then a compiler that compiles from the chem, uh, the chemical equations down to Rolex. And guess what? Um, we've known about this since the early two thousands, and there are lots and lots of these, uh, including the uh, the SPIM machine. Uh, so this is the stochastic pi machine uh, and many other implementations. Um, uh, and, and I refer people to the work of Ehudi Shapiro as well as uh, um, uh, 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 Regev Aviv and, um, and uh, other, others in this field, including Luca Cardelli. So, so the, there's plenty of uh, written work about how the how the algorithm works, how you can compile from chemistry down to d down to a substrate like Rolang. Uh, so so it turns out that work has already been done. It's, it's not as hard as one might think. Okay, mm. interesting. So I mean, also it, 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 for the supply chain example, a simpler way of thinking about the chemistry is just the bill of materials that yes. includes both the materials and the process and the uh, um, and the assets that you need, for example, you need a ship to uh, be able to complete the shipping or something. So in, in, no. in that sense, that's a well-known model in, in the uh, supply chain world, the bill of materials and the bill of process and asset uh, capacities needed. Mm -hmm. Absol absolutely. I was just trying to, trying to connect it to the chemistry. Right. But yes. Right. The chemistry is the more generic uh, 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 case that... Uh, um, it's more broadly applicable. So. Yes. Yeah. Exactly. So uh, I'll go along with the with the chemistry analogy, and I'll be specific to chemistry because this this uh, this is an amazing idea for me. I you know, so I manage saltwater aquariums, and one of the hardest things to do in saltwater aquariums is figure out what's going to happen to the water because you get evaporation, you're adding food to it, there's all kinds of chemical processes that take place inside of an aquarium. And it's impossible to predict what's gonna happen with your water when you do anything to a tank. Mm. So, you know, what's gonna to happen to my salinity in my tank? Is it gonna kill my fish if I do this? <laughs> And, and just the, the ability to maybe to even do aquarium simulations, uh, I, I think that this, this idea works very well with that. Yes, oh, I, 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 absolutely. Uh, you, you, uh, I, again, I, I heartily recommend Uhud, Uhudi Shapiro's and Bill Silverman's uh, um, seminal paper in which they, they, they show um, how to do this for a stochastic version of the pi calculus. Um, and, and because there's a direct translation from pi to rho, uh, you can you can uh, you can compile their work down to row calculus. So you you could absolutely 
uh, do uh, aquarium simulation uh, if you wanted to. It's an interestingly complex problem. So it might, might take a while to do the coding, but it is uh, quite uh, uh, well within reach. Uh, well, not just from an application point of view, I mean, the, 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 the experience and intelligence required to run, say, the Georgia Aquarium, which is 10 million gallons of water. Um, I, I mean, that's, uh, you know, th this kind of a tool would, would I think, vault public aquariums into, into the future because they're dealing with all kinds of stuff in there. So. Oh, that's very interesting. Cool, 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 cool. Thank you, Bill. Very, very good comments. Um, Rao, are you are you done? Uh, yes, I am. Okay, I think All we right. can move on to Daryl. Yes. Yeah, really fascinating conversation. Um, uh, it's it's so so great. Do you actually imagine um, a world where everything with a serial number is is a token on chain? I, I I don't imagine such a world right now. Uh, that, that such a world could be. Uh, I'm. Uh, I, I I I think that there are plenty of applications where you treat this digital world where, where you where you where we've be able, we've been able to create scarcity, right? So the, the the problem with the digital world is that copying is too easy, right? It's it's costless to do copy. Mm -hmm. And the, the, the point of blockchain, or one of the points of blockchain, is that it provides an algorithm whereby you can prevent the digital copy, right? That, that, that's, the, that's the solution to the double spend, right? You can, you, you can now create resources that have scarcity. But once you have resources that have scarcity, you can begin to model a wide range of phenomena that chemistry already does for us, right? But, right. but when, when you use actual chemical substances, you know, there are actual chemical consequences, <laughs> right? So, so if you throw sodium in with some water, you know, there's, <laughs> there's a real consequence to that, um, as I'm sure a lot of high school kids can tell you about. Um, <laughs> so so, uh, so, so, so the, 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 the point I'm trying to make is that we, we, we see from chemistry the wide range of utilities utility or um yeah a, a lot of behaviors that have high utility right um so so for example this book i'm reading the the nature and origin of life by eric smith um they're tr they, they identify that that the um the the, the metabolism the core uh, reaction cycle the krebs cycle or the tca cycle is conserved across all living organisms Right, and it's basically just a, a network of chemical reactions, is what it is. And it's strange in the sense that it can run forward and run backwards, and the, and the direction will give you, you know, um, you know, something that works in an oxygen environment versus something that works in a in a non oxidative environment, um, like a methane environment. Um, so, so that 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 that's magic. But the the reason I'm mentioning this is because you know that that's that's another really powerful example of the utility of chemistry, right? So sort of the, the, the bedrock of all living organisms um, is this network of chemical reactions. So, so being able to have um, chemistry-like behavior using blockchain seems to be um, just, you know, I mean, the, the sky's the limit in terms of the kinds of function and capacity that we can imagine. So everything from DeFi, which say, you know, I, am, I, I really want to have both, you know, um, some ETH and some Bitcoin wrapped together um, before I'll give you this capability, right? So we, that you can model that as a reaction that's, that's like the formation of water, um, just, just as an example. Um, uh, you can also use it for Internet of Things, which is what we were beginning to touch on. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not suggesting any particular uh, tokenization path, uh, as as you've suggested. That that's one way to go about it. But there might be others. Wow. Yeah. Super interesting. I mean, my mind instantly goes to the music industry and how this yeah. you know this holy grail that we've been trying to build for years, where you have attribution and provenance. Um, so you know, my my fantasy is that one day in my lifetime. Um, I'll be able to record a drum beat, 
put that drum beat in it in the middle of a song, you know, as part of a, one of the stems in a song, and release the stems, and have that drum beat be freely usable as a sample for someone else's song, and the and yet I'd like to create rules so that you know if it's like a a Nazi um, you know white power band they're not allowed to use my drum loop but you know so like being able to kind of create these rules around mm -hmm. the around the provenance uh, I don't know it just seems connected to what you're just talking about there oh, oh absolutely you're, you're absolutely right and and I'm suggesting that the, the chemistry gives us uh, in, in some ways a very useful programming interface right 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 yeah. yeah it's it's like a it's it's a good analogy for so many other things yes and i and i think many people might be able to grasp chemical equations faster than they grasp rolling and certainly faster than they grasp the legal quagmire of the music industry uh, yeah. <laughs> and those well, kinds of like, you know. that, that, that's a mystery I don't think anyone's been able to solve. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, the crazy chemical reactions when, you know, some things occur in that world. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. But uh, anyway, Daryl, over to you. Do you have the Week in Review? Are you ready? Uh, yeah. Um, okay, so here's the Week in Review for Thursday, August 19th to today, August 25th. Uh, last Thursday in the Governance Committee, we went through the AGM 2021 timeline. Uh, we discussed gathering a nominating committee and Ian suggested a board resolution setting the record date for um, uh, ID verified members joining. And we discussed issues around announcing the deadline for self-nominating. Um, on Friday, in Climate Coordination, our cast, um, Douglas Rushkoff joined us as a surprise guest. Uh, he just popped in out of the blue. Um, and uh, it was it was uh, it was incredible for me talking with him because like he's a rock star to me. So uh, you know it was amazing meeting him in uh, for the first time during an R cast. Um, and we also discussed flooding in Japan, uh, the cultural origins that led to blockchain. Um, we talked about NFTs, and Greg shared a poem, and Steve Ross Talbot shared a sketch for a health app for displaced people. I uh, highly recommend checking that one out. Um, Blog.rchain.coop. Um, on Monday in the Casper standup, this week's Casper standup covered quantail based models for the quantifiers of the quantifiers. Um, also on Monday in the RDEV member co-op planning, uh, cooperation research planning, creating rev address using MetaMask. And I don't understand this last sentence, Jim, so you might have to help me here using localhost dev env on Mac. Are you there, Jim? Yeah, um, he was uh, uh, able to run the uh, uh, R node on the Mac without a problem and use that in conjunction with the uh, RDEV developer interface and uh, uh, learn some Rolay. And uh, uh, Unchalov was uh, uh, along with us and uh, uh, he's uh, looking at uh, uh, running a node for the uh, with, for the uh, Archain Developer Cooperation. Very cool, Jim. Is that the first time the uh, the development interface has been used on a Mac? Yep, that's a landmark. We have a recording, but we haven't written it up. Very cool. Um, okay, so on Tuesday. At the communications working group, there wasn't one because um, I had to cancel because I had a previous engagement. Uh, let's see, the on Wednesday of today in the active member hangout, um, we discussed last week's RCAST with Doug Rushkoff, the history of sentiment around decentralization during the early web years of the 90s. Uh, that led to a discussion around mesh networks. Um, I asked about Bram Cohen's Chia network, which led to a discussion around different consensus protocols. And Raphael talked about proof of humanity. And Steve uh, Henley talked about Greg's ideas around quantum consensus. Uh, and that brings us to now. <laughs> Thank you. Any questions for Daryl? Awesome. Okay. Thank you so much, Daryl.
Um, just quickly, uh, uh, there were several there are several board members here on the call. Um, any any uh, salient points from the from the, uh, uh, the 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 board? Steve Henley, for example, you, I think you had you wanted to emphasize a couple of things. Oh, hi everyone. Yes, I we have our annual general meeting coming up in uh, October, October twenty fourth. So I wanted to share my screen and just review uh, some important dates for everyone. So let me share my screen here. So this is a um, AGM timeline, uh, AGM 2021. If Let me, uh, here, I can post the link in the chat. Let me see if I can do that here. And then for everyone watching this uh, on replay, you can get to this, um, uh, this document, it's in the uh, Archain repository in the governance dash committee sub repository. And if you click on issues, it's issue 17. So that will pull up this timeline. So here we are on October 25th. And uh, today is, uh, so in, in order to vote on October 24th or for the annual general meeting, you had to have been a uh, recorded Archain cooperative member as of today. So today was that, that deadline. And today as well is the deadline for board candidate self nominations. So we still have a few hours left in the day. Uh, so if anyone uh, listening to this, um, well, all, I guess it depends on when it's posted, but anyone listening to this at this moment in time, uh, if, if you're interested in being a, um, a board, um, having a board seat or running for a board seat, uh, feel free to uh, self-nominate. And uh, Ian, if you're on the line, um, the, the, I think the, help me with the, um, the email address, I believe it's nom committee at rchain.coop, is that correct? Let's see here. Well, maybe we'll... work on that here in a moment. But in any case, it's... Um, so starting tomorrow, the... Uh, we'll start, the, the nominating committee will start begin its interviewing will convene and start an interviewing process and let's see here okay i think we've got here we go the email address for the uh, to self nominate it's nom n o m dash committee uh or n o m dash c m t e at gov dot archain dot co op thank you ian I just, I just want to point out that you have to be a member to be able to self-nominate. Only members can run for the board. Yes, thank you, Rao. Okay, and then let's see here. A month from, around a month from today, uh, around, uh, on September 24th, the nominating committee will send the proposed board candidates to the, to the board. And then... Uh, so, and then on the 28th, that following Tuesday, so it's Friday, September 24th, and then that following Tuesday, September 28th, the board uh, will vote on the, the approval for the board candidates. And uh, so on the September 24th, that Friday, that's also a, the deadline to submit items of business. So if you're interested in, uh, interested in submitting item of business, be sure... Um, to get them in before September 24th. <clears throat> if you need any instructions on what information is needed, um, uh, there's a template in the Discord under the, um, the AGM uh, channel uh, as a guidance for submitting a, an IOB. And then on October 12th, the, the board will meet to approve the, the ballot. So the ballot will consist of uh, all of the approved candidates and items of business. And then voting will begin 
on October 21st. And uh, if, if you notice on here, there, I'm skipping over a lot of uh, other, other dates. So those dates are roughly to, um, we're going to be using the, um, the R vote mechanism that we used last year. So uh, if you voted last year, you'll have some familiarity with that, but uh, that's, that's the voting mechanism that we'll, we'll be using. And then uh, voting will end um, October 23rd, 24th, depending on your time zone. And then we'll have our annual general meeting on uh, it's Sunday, our uh, US uh, time. Uh, I don't have the actual time of day. Um, we'll, we'll be uh, providing that um, at some point, but it's uh, uh, October 24th is the annual general meeting. So let's see here. I've got some notes here in the okay. So the channel in Discord, it's the it's AGM-2021. So you can look in there for a template uh, to follow to uh, submit an item of business. Very good. Thanks again, Ian. Okay, and if anyone has any questions, uh, uh, feel free to ask. I think I uh, mentioned that today is the last day that um, people can self-nominate for the board. They have to send an email uh, just uh, stating their intention to run uh, to the uh, nom committee at gov.archain.coop address. Um, and the other thing was I reported that the, uh, the new RGov voting interface would probably not be ready and uh, some argov people are saying wait 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 and uh all of a sudden they're making a lot of progress uh so if it's ready to go by next week uh i will propose that we use the new argov uh, voting mechanism instead of the old one is Thank the you. email necessary i sent in the form and it's uh I don't think I need to send an email as well, or do I? Yeah, you need to send an email by today. Okay. Okay, thank you, Jim. All right. Thank you, so, everyone. So, so thank you, Steve. Uh, maybe I missed it. Uh, you could easily have said it, but but it bears repeating if, if you already mm -hmm. said it. So the, the, uh, the deadline for the um, nominating committee to submit the um, um, balloted candidates to the board for consideration is the 24th of September. Yes. So from, from today until the 24th of September, um, uh, the nominating committee will be considering the, the self-nominations and make selections based upon their due diligence. And that will be submitted to the board, and then um, by the twenty, uh, by the thirty, ninth, is that right? It's uh, that Tuesday, September twenty eighth is twenty eighth. Yeah, okay. the date the board will actually approve the uh, uh, the submitted candidates provided by the nominating committee. Um, so that'll happen on that that Tuesday, that following Tuesday, yes, September twenty eighth. So so, so the twenty, it's from the twenty eighth through the uh, through the, the the election cycle that people will have the opportunity to campaign. Um, if you if you campaign a little too early, be aware that you might not actually be balloted. So you have you have to go through the nominating committee and the board uh, selection process first. So you will you will receive an email on the 29th. Um, um, th those candidates who've made it through the due diligence process will receive an email on the 29th um, as to whether or not they should, you know, essentially begin campaigning. Does that make sense? Important points. Thank you, Greg, for sharing. All right. Okay. okay. Thank you, everyone. Th th thanks, Steve. That's very important. Uh, any questions from anyone about the process?
So I'm given to understand that while I was away, there was a lot more talking on these channels. <laughs> I'm very tempted to stay away so you guys will talk. <laughs> or I'll get a I'll get a new Zoom ID and you won't know it's me. <laughs> so uh, I would like to say it's not a question about the process or anything, but I would like to say that uh, the Arnold Project uh, the proof of concept Arnold project uh, will be ready next Wednesday to uh, demonstrate our current work. Uh, a lot of it is based on the demo you saw today uh, by Raphael, uh, but we'll be presenting uh, next week. Do I have that right, Craig? Yeah, you have the slot. So if you guys are ready, anytime. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so let everyone know that, uh, that the first public display of uh, the Arnold Project will be next Wednesday. Fantastic. I am so looking forward to this. This is very good. Wonderful. Um, so any of the questions or comments? I, I do have a couple of other news items that I'll pass along. Uh, but uh, uh, are there any other questions or comments? All right, then. Um, so this morning, I had the, uh, the, the, the great uh, fortune to have a chat with the president of the Foresight Institute. Um, I have mentioned several times that uh, our chain would be joining the Foresight Institute as a member, as a sponsor. Uh, so we, we sponsored them um, a few weeks ago. And uh, after some uh, phone tag, <laughs> Um, uh, we were able to, uh, I was able to have a conversation um, uh, with the president of the Institute and it was a, it was quite, quite, it was a, definitely a, a meeting of minds. I'm very, very much looking forward to um, engaging with them. Uh, I am given to understand that uh, uh, we'll, we will be invited to give a keynote at the Foresight Institute. So looking forward to that. Um, and then um uh, we have also uh, likewise extended the invitation um, to uh, to them to join uh, their members to join our climate and coordination call. Uh, so so very very excited about that. I heartily recommend that you um, th they have uh, uh, YouTube videos. Uh, um, these uh, videos are are by very very um, well respected uh, thinkers um, in their fields. So, so there are. There are three groups. Um, the group we're joining is the Intelligent Cooperation, which includes blockchain and many other uh, technologies, including AI and, um, and things like that. There's also a, uh, a molecular machines uh, group. Um, we'll be joining all three uh, because we have, uh, we have uh, um, uh, connections across all three groups. Uh, but I, I heartily recommend um, that you, you take a look at their, their materials on YouTube and, and their website. Uh, very, very uh, highly respected uh, thinkers um, in, in involved. Uh, just to name a few, there's uh, Daniel Schmachtenberg, who's been involved in presenting, uh, as well as Aubrey de Grey. Um, and... Um, uh, oh, there's a blockchain fellow whose name is escaping me right now. Sorry about that. Uh, you it'll you it'll mean Mark me. Miller? Uh, Mark Miller is certainly involved, but that's not the one I was thinking about. Um, okay. there, there's, there's one who's been talking now for the better part of five years about how blockchain changes governance. <laughs> um, yeah, so he, he's, been, he's been talking about how the nation state is going to be completely upended by blockchain. Um, which uh, is something that we've been saying for quite some time as well. So we, we will be in good company uh, and it will be great to get the, the message out about our chain and also to, to, to learn more about what other people are doing and, and plug into a wider community. So this is what I've been hoping for for quite some time and, and it's beginning to happen. Any questions about that? Just want to say this is really exciting, Greg. Um, bravo. Yeah, it's 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 good news for all of us, right? I think uh, you know, connect, connecting to a community like this is just just what the doctor ordered. Agreed. Um, 
Uh, let's see. I think that's everything. Did I miss anything? Anything else we want to bring up? Steve, were there any, Steve uh, Henley, were there any updates with respect to the blockchain association, the government blockchain association? Let's see. Uh, as as well, one um, one positive note is um, I've I've been speaking with um, uh, a lead developer at the National um, African American Museum of Culture and History, and they're very interested in um, NFTs. So actually, the 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 there's 19 Smithsonian Institute and they uh, have organized a, um, a Smithsonian wide working group to investigate investigate and analyze uh, NFTs on how they can utilize them and what requirements that that they have so uh, they're just starting that process so we're right there in the mix as well and uh, I pointed out you know one of our uh, one of the important aspects that Archain uh, Publishing, w with our offering of NFTs, has is the ability to have that digital asset recorded on chain, and it's actually embedded, rolled up in the NFT. And you compare that with Ethereum and other NFT solutions, which are off-chain. You, you know, the NFT, that line of code is on chain it's on the ethereum blockchain but the asset that image itself is on a server centralized somewhere off chain so uh, they were uh, excited about that and then as as government agencies you know as n national museums for the united states one of their requirements is that they have any solution that they implement has to be environmental friendly. So there's no way that they would, you know, entertain using an NFT that's using a, a proof of work uh, consensus uh, mechanism, you know, because of the, the energy consumption and the, the impact on the environment. So it's, in, in their words, or uh, the person I was speaking with, it's, it's anti their mission. So uh, any solution that they implement has to be environmental friendly so and that's right up uh, our chain's alley with it, a proof of stake uh, consensus algorithm that's you know just uses uh, very little energy at all so you know we we have some in, important uh very strong um, uh, items uh assets components that that speak to what uh what our offering is so um yeah so it's just the beginning of the, the process but um yeah, that that's the the current update with that. Great, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Any other questions or comments from anyone in the community? Well, thanks everyone. I hope everyone stays safe and um, cool, and uh, I'll see you on the other side.